Hey guys, my name is Ryan, and we're back again with another Spirit Island video. Today, I want to do a quick video about some wordings that I have been using which people have told me can be confusing. Sometimes I say that I'm ahead or I'm behind the invaders. Sometimes I'll say that I'm playing proactively or reactively. Sometimes I make references to the tempo of the game. Not, not quite my tempo. So, what does this mean, and are there any strategic implications to these words? We mostly take our spirit actions in the fast or slow phase, and those phases are divided by the invader phase. Each time the invaders take their actions, they are creating threats on the board that we must respond to. So the question is, when and how do we solve them? The tricky thing with Spirit Island is that we have to choose all the cards that we're playing in both the slow and the fast phase up front. Fast cards are quite easy. We just interact with the board exactly as we see it. Since there's no new information gained between the spirit and fast phases, it's quite common to see players pseudo-execute their fast phase during the spirit phase. Maybe they'll put dice on the board indicating where they're going to defend. They might put reminder tokens out to show where and how they will push and kill invaders. And Of course, some players just go ahead and actually execute the turns asynchronously before others have even locked in their play for the turn. So long as the group is okay with it, it's not a big deal. Executing fast cards is all deterministic. Let's say we're only playing fast powers all game. Maybe we're doing the blitz scenario. I would say that we are playing behind the invaders, reactively. On turn 4, we can only use our powers to deal with the invaders that were created on turn 3 or before, since the turn 4 invader phase has not yet occurred. On the contrary, we have slow powers. Slow powers do not have the deterministic convenience that fast powers do, but in basically every other metric, they're better. By intelligently using slow powers, we can get ahead of the invaders and we can play proactively. On turn 4, we can deal with the invaders that were created on turn 4. Since the invaders are dealt with immediately, we no longer have to plan around them for the next turn. Our turn 4 cards solve the problems created on turn 4, which then allows us to play proactively again on turn 5, once again playing cards that will deal with the issues that are created in that very same turn. This creates a wonderful snowballing effect, and it can easily close out games. This is what I would call gaining tempo on the invaders. It can be hard to start the snowball, though. Sometimes we can get lucky with event or fear cards, which can change the tempo of the game. Sometimes we get back-to-back -back invader cards in the same land, which has a bunch of Dahan, so it clears itself in Ravage, and thus does not build. But most often, it's a choice that we have to make. We have to read the board and consider our options with the cards we have in hand and find the right time to switch it up. This could mean taking Blight that could have been defended, but I would argue that solving everything proactively is absolutely worth it. As I alluded to earlier, this requires knowledge of the game and the adversary you're up against. In order to attack things that don't exist yet, we must have an understanding of what is around the corner whether it's cards that are building or lands that are yet to be explored. Each adversary has different ways of messing with our plans too, and these must also be taken into consideration. As you gain more experience with this game, and you gain better pattern recognition, and you can see what's about to happen, this will become easier and easier for you. I hope this brief explanation makes sense. I'm going to do a game now as Lightning Swift Strike, which I feel like is the best to demonstrate this concept. Lightning's special rule allows for any card to be used proactively or reactively. So hopefully I can control tempo to safely find an opportunity to grow up to six card plays. So before that moment, I'll just be reclaim looping and just hanging on. And then after I can grow up to six card plays, we'll be supercharged as well as ahead on tempo and it should be smooth sailing from there. So enjoy. Base Lightning vs. England 6 is one of my favorite matchups in the game. Lightning is a very simple, basic spirit, so executing its powers doesn't really consume any thought. This means that we can focus on the deeper aspects of the game. Lightning wants to find an opportunity to grow again to break the reclaim loop, and this often requires finding an opportunity to underplay. 
We have the ability to control the speeds of our powers, so we can switch from a reactive to a proactive play pattern at any time. And then England 6 requires us to be judicious with our fear generation, making sure to always get one every turn. These tensions make this matchup incredibly fun, and it's one that I come back to regularly. It's very challenging, but it's also so rewarding. So let's get into it, starting with a Jungle's Explore. So as Lightning, we want to make sure that we're within one range with the Sacred Sight to every land on the board. So by growing here, we have successfully accomplished that. We're going to do the standard do nothing turn one. Okay. And then on turn two, uh, we will grow and then we will play everything besides Raging Storm. So since we already have a Sacred Sight by everything, I'm just going to triple stack these lands. So if a Blight or something happens, we don't lose our Sacred Sights and we don't lose the uh, setup that we've already got for ourselves. All right. So we'll use our Innate over here. Um, and then we'll go here, pair these guys up, getting a fear. And we're going to hold on to the Shatter Homesteads to deal with our land number six. Okay, Invader Phase. Fear per Spirit that has at least one Sacred Site, that's me. Uh, add a Explorer to each land with that. That is not good. Uh... So we're really bad at dealing with explorers. Normally we have to use Tadahan in order to kill them. So getting the extra explorer in these lands is pretty bad for us. But thankfully, the beast does solve that first one. Mountain or Sands, we get a free Tahan. Thank you very much. Okay. So first of all, Ravage. Build. Uh, and then Explore in the Mountains. And then we have to add an explorer to each of our sacred sites. Okay, last we get a Shatter Homesteads, Fear, and Kill a Town. And we are off to the races with our first reclaim. Uh, any kind of defense is nice, so this Drift Down uh, is likely the pick. Call to Ferocity is another interesting choice. It's a zero cost fire, so we could, you know, do. And in fact, it's a compelling thing to go for, right? Go for four card plays like this. Um, and then we can uh, kill the city, push these guys out. Alternatively, by getting uh, a defend card, uh, even though it doesn't have the fire, it still costs zero. And we can kill this town, and then we can defend this land. So that way we start to have a little bit more control. I think we're going to gain more utility from defense over the course of the game. So we'll go here. Using our innate to kill this town. And then we'll defend it for four. Um, we don't need, because uh, we, we don't need to do anything else right now. Our position's just fine. So I'm just gonna hold on to everything. Okay, invader phase. Uh, healthy island, extra health. Thankfully, we have the extra to Han. Beast kill explorers, thank you. And then add a coastal to Han. Uh, I'm going to put it here so that way I can push two out and then everything is still paired up. Skip all build actions and land of city. We get to protect our disease. Thank you very much. So, build, skip that one. Ravage, build skipping, and then we're going to explore the sands. Boom, boom, skip build actions in the lands with city. So that was a really, really good card for us. That saved us three, uh, well, two buildings and a disease is what it protected us from. So that's a really nice one. And we're looking at a double build 
in these sands. So we're off to the races. Here we go. Let's go for a fear and kill a town. Right there. Time passes. We can use our defense to do like a little defend one there. Wait, did I forget to put, do my Dahan push? I don't think I used my Harbingers. So we're going to do uh, this before we kill the town to pick up one fear. Reclaim, energy, miner. Uh, we have no extra animals to pull this off. And besides, it's really not that good against England. Weep isn't bad. Zero cost, fire. Uh, it also has a water, so way down the line. It can be useful here. Uh, a little bit of control, not bad. I think we'll take it. It's kind of like Lands of Haunts and Embers, but probably just better because we can use it more than once. Okay, so we'll do, how does this look? Uh, we cannot, we only have three slow to fasts. So we can't do all four of these, but I don't think we want to anyways. We already have a fear card. So let's do this, get our defend one. Um, and I think we just hold on to everything else. Yeah, yeah, I think we just hold the rest of them. So taking the opportunity to try and be proactive as much as we can uh, whenever we get the opportunity because like we could we could like you know I don't know kill this town kill this town kill this like this doesn't really gain us any value down to a coastal adjacent to a coastal town we'll go here beast kill explorers thank you the Han to a land with the Han no blight no disease Uh, we'll go right here. Okay. Player adds a strife to a land with at least two invaders. Huh. Well, if we had killed this town, we could have protected ourselves from a blight, but that's okay. We'll just get you for future value. Build. Ravage. Build. Exploring the jungles. Okay. And we will uh, escalate. Let's see. I'm going to escalate right here. All right. Shatter Homestead. Fear. Kill a town. Okay. Innate. Kill a town. Okay. Now we can defend this land. Uh, weep for what is lost. We have three different types of invaders. That's going to be three fear. And we will push. Um, so we can pick up a free explorer right there. So we'll go that way. And then last, we're going to use harbingers, fear, uh, push these two. Time passes. Okay, so we know we can defend four here. We're possibly going to eat a blight here. And we'll see what happens with those guys. Uh, Confounding Mist is another defend four. So that's nice. Another option is to just remove a blight. Uh, this gives a little bit less defend. We could kill the town. Uh, and then we get more fear this way relative to confounding mists, and I do like fear in this matchup. Because um, that's likely going to blight. So if we can delay it all one turn, that'd be nice. Maybe we do this. And we go here, here. Uh, is this our turn to underplay? Because if we do this... We kill, defend, defend, and then next turn, so we do this, that puts us down to two, then we'll go up to four, and I have a four cost worth of hand right here. We do that, 
Um, maybe I don't even play this Raging Storm, and if I play just these, get Town Kill, Push. Might not be a bad opportunity. Yeah, I think this is the turn we're just going to go for it. So we'll go here, here, one, two, three. Okay, defend three, defend four. Uh, plenty of air in order to make everything go. And then we'll do a fear and a kill. And this is perfect because this doesn't really produce all that much fear, but the two from this city uh, will get me what I need. Now the question is actually, do I toss this Harbingers in right now to pick off this city? If I do that, then I probably reclaim one more time. And I think that's fine. I think getting the city kill is worth it. Okay, reclaim. Or sorry, uh, event. Replace a dude with a town on an inland land. Only one choice. Disease strife, we skip ravage actions. Okay. Push a dude over town from a land with Tahan. Um... I could just decline to do so. Everything we've got is exactly where I want it. Uh, choose a coastal land, gather a Dahan, one damage per Dahan. I guess we could have taken the free pick up here. I um, guess I'll just do that. That's fine. May gather and explore into a land with buildings or a town into a land with city. Um, I think once again, I think our position is just fine. So we will build, ravage, build. Exploring the mountains. Oh man, we just keep cycling. We, we, we missed wetlands on stage one and stage two. This is fascinating. But now we have a big land to deal with here. And we go to time passes. Well, the interesting thing is that we're going to kill this town fast. And then that means that this land won't build. And we'll let this die here. So we're actually going to be pocketing against England. <laughs> you never see that happen. Uh, all right, here we go. Um, nature's connection is interesting. So we know we need to play this Harbingers. Probably going to play this Shatter Homesteads. Probably this Drift Down here and then any town kill will protect us from blight so any fire card will get the job done i could do a nature's connection for two fires to kill this city that's certainly something um is there any other lines available weep We'll get some. We'll get a town push out of that later. Um, maybe, maybe this for two fires, uh, or I could play this, which gets me a little bit more fear. I think we do this. All right, fear kill. Push to fear. Defend four. It's going to be one, two, three powers that go slow to fast. Event. Um, oh. I have extra health, but the invaders have extra health. I think that's fine. Because we don't want to, like, make this guy die and by what, forgetting this primal memories? The defend four AOE really won't get me anywhere. 
So I think top is perfectly fine. It doesn't change anything for us. Uh, no beast in city. We have plenty of Dahan. Uh, let's see, we gain one energy. Love to see it. Oh, isolate a land and skip build actions. Great. I like doing that here because we're looking at two potential builds in this land. It just puts us in a situation where we're just going to be uh, edge caseable. So playing around that will be nice. Okay, build. Ravage. Uh, this guy's going to get damage. Because uh, the extra health, it's basically the same. Um, and then build here. And we'll explore the wetlands. Hey, finally. And we skip that build action. So that's really nice. That's going to be solved. Even if this builds, that won't build. We're in a great position with those wetlands. And then one, two, three different types of invaders. And push one thing out. All right, time passes. Is now the time to go for it? If we do it now, we get a city kill. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't think that really does much of anything. I think one of these lands has to blight no matter what. So I guess that's a city kill and a defend three. And then we have the opportunity to grow. It's not bad. You know what? That's, that's not bad at all. So we'll go bottom, bottom. Gain, pay. Uh, and we know we're going to take a blight here. Let's, um... Since we already got this pocketed out, this land really doesn't matter. I always like to put my guys on different terrain types. So I'll go here with this sacred site. Go here, here. Here we get a fear and a defend three. And then we'll use this to kill the city. Boom. Do I use Raging Storm anywhere? Not really. I guess I wait and see if we get an explore in the mountains. It's gonna be way better. Vader phase event, terror level two. For every two cards, hey, plus one damage. Sheesh. Add a beast adjacent to a land with beast and then kill a Dahana land with beast. All right. Oh, we could have had a free defend five, but alas, we do not. So we get plus one damage from this. So we need a fear card to give us one defense. Strife in a Dahan. Okay, we'll just strike you, I guess. Beast, disease, or two Dahan. We get to remove something. Getting rid of the Explorer won't really have any effect. Let's get rid of you. Okay, so we're going to build in the jungles. We're going to ravage the mountains. Okay, so we have the Cascade here, and we have to add this. So we'll go Cascade and Healthy Island Effect, which will flip. Um, okay, so we will be taking a Blight here, which will lose this. But before we do that, we also get to Execute. So Destroy a Presence. And then we can discard a card, which we have none to gain an energy, so no free energy for us. Get another Blight card. And yeah, we're going to have uh, three more power cards in play every turn for the rest of the game. So we're going to be sacking Presence. Let's get to it. <laughs> uh, build the Wetlands. And explore the Jungle Sands. Evidently, we should have used our Raging Storm. <laughs> But what are you going to do? Okay. Here, uh, I'm going to Raging Storm this because I'm pretty sure we can maintain a pocket. 
right? If we just kill this town, then this land won't build. So that's what we'll do with our Raging Storm. Time passes. Gain energy, gain a miner. Ooh, Visions of Fiery Doom is a nice one. Um... Hmm. The whole beast damage thing. Like, we could do, like, a Raging Storm plus a Blood Dross to kill this. Or we could just play good cards. We're no longer being threatened by the Stage 2 Escalation, so it's a lot harder for us to just outright lose. Like, we're really only getting one going up to five this turn. Uh, and I don't think there's any event that would put two buildings into this one land. So I believe this one, it is not possible to lose this turn. We have zero fear and zero fear cards. We do need to get five fear this turn fast. Uh, so that is something that we want to be cognizant of. Let's, uh, I'll just take this Visions of Fiery Doom, but we're really not going to do much with it. Okay. So this turn, so we could Shatter Homesteads. Well, actually, just get all of our zeros in place, since now we have so many card plays. Uh, this one's not going to do anything, but one, two, three, four, okay. Um, we could do like a Haunted by Primal Memories. This puts me up to five. So any air will get me there. So maybe I, maybe I do just play this just for elements. Get the double destruction. Hmm. Feels like a good play. Let's put a defend four here. <clears throat> uh, let's do a shatter homesteads, fear, kill. See, one, two, three, four. So we can do everything. So the question is do we want to? Probably. Looking at three fear from this, a fear from this. Uh, where do we want to use our double kill? So we could go right here with it, right? That would completely solve the land. Another option is to go here with it, killing city town, leaving behind just a town city. Because this has so much to Han, it's more efficient for us to let that build up and then knock it back down. Um... I'm going to use my Harbingers, though, right now, just for value. And then I think we can just hold everything else and let it all happen. Sacrifice a Presence. Uh, this land is not obligatory, so we can, like, we, we only need these two lands, so we can sacrifice here first. Four more lands with town. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Add a blank to a land with or adjacent to a town. Okay. We'll go here. Uh, add disease to a coastal land with the most buildings. Yes. Three damage to Han. Okay. Push a presence from a land with the Han and do two damage in the land that you push it into. Um, I need the Sacred Site in order to target the Sands. Now, it won't be building, but it could explore. I think it's fine. We kill this, get a little value. And then do her Tower for Lionel Presence or a, a city from a Sacred Site. See it. All right, and we go City Builds. Ravage in the wetlands, build in the jungle sands. And then we explore the sands mountains. 
Okay. Now, I do have those visions of Fiery Doom, so I can just kind of kick that guy out and it's not a big deal. But I'm willing to bet because we have such... We only have, what, 15, 18 fear left to go. So we can... Do... Because we have the back-to-back -back sands, I'm going to change my plan. I'm going to kill these two. Okay, make sure that's defended. Dies to the Han. <clears throat> And we can basically just defend this and just kind of kick the can down the road and not really worry about it. So we're gonna go kill, kill. With the weep, we get three fear for three different types of invaders and we'll just push, uh, just push that over there. Get some value from our defense. Okay, time passes. Reclaim. Energy miner. Ooh. So this is just worth a strife. Um, strife that. That just dies to the Dahans. So that's solved. Okay, so we know that we're going to drift down here. We can primal here uh, and then it's just you know getting as much fear and value as we can so we do that um that for fire fire we got two more Wait, fire, fire. This should be at three. Okay. Here. Um. Yeah, I think that's actually probably just the best. All of this stuff cannot improve what we've already got. So I'll just pick you up for too fast fear. Now, how much fast fear is this worth? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We need 12 fear to win. So actually, wait, no, we just win right here. We just win right here. Okay, so we need 12 fear to win. Okay, so two cities, okay, is gonna be four, uh, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Cool. Yeah. Nope. We just get it right here with everything that we already have in hand. Let's take it home. Um, okay. We'll just pay. Use our innate to kill two cities. Boom, boom. Uh, we're going to go right here. Three fear to defend three right here. Okay, and we'll go here. One fear for type of invader present. So that's gonna be one, two, three fear. Kick you out. And then last but not least, Shatter Homestead, we get a fear and a town kill. And that is a fear victory. So uh, I find this matchup to be very fun, very interesting. Uh, you gotta balance a lot of little things and you know, knowing when to hold your cards and knowing when to be a little bit more aggressive in order to thread the line between all the different tensions that we talked about. I think that's really fun. And I hope that uh, this was a good demonstration of, you know, trying to play proactively, reactively, you know, just really controlling the tempo of the game and focusing on the aspects of the game that are more universal. While they may be accented with this spirit, they are universally applicable. And, uh, you know, we can use them in every situation to help us win more games. So thanks for, uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.